The Aripo Savannah's strict nature reserve is another environmentally sensitive area, designated by the EMA in 2007. Although it is only about 18 square kilometers, or about the size of the southern city of San Fernando, its distinct biodiversity is no less remarkable than what may be found at Matura or Narifa. The Savannas is located within a roughly triangular area between Arima and Sangre Grande. In further testament to its uniqueness, this ESA is the largest remaining intact savanna type habitat in Trinidad and Tobago. There are three distinctive vegetative communities in these savannas based on the structure of the vegetation and the composition of plant species. These are the marsh forest, the open savannas, and the palm marshes. Marsh forests are the largest of the three plant communities that you find in the savannas and they typically consist of forests that usually gets flooded for a certain period of time during the year. The savanna ecosystems are usually open formation or open plant formations that are dominated by sedges and grasses. Palm marshes are uh, palm stands where the palms are really the dominant vegetation and they overtop all the other vegetation at the site and usually they get used by birds for food and as um, places to breed. But birds aren't the only inhabitants of this protected area as a great number of mammals, reptiles, amphibians and butterflies have been recorded in this ESA. The Aripo Savannas are is the home of about 60 orchids, which represents one third of all the orchids found in Trinidad and Tobago. The Orchid Society is engaged in studying the life cycle of the Cytopodium paviflorum, which is endemic to the savannas. In uh, August 2013, 300 uh, seedlings were reintroduced into the savanna, which uh, these plants were germinated in my nursery. And uh, the attempt, we, what we are attempting to do is actually to reintroduce plants in case the savannas are destroyed or damaged in such an extent that you would have to do artificial means of uh, pro uh, prolonging the lives of these orchids in the society. Aripo savannas is known for its rich history. And for, for, for instance, in 1930, the area was surveyed and boundary pillars were established. And in 1934, the wider area was declared the Longstretch Forest Reserve. A few years later, the reserve was leased to the United States military for the establishment of a base called Fort Reed. It was part of probably the largest and busiest airfield during World War II. The U.S. military constructed roads, buildings, culverts, and a bunker complex to the south of the reserve. The Savannas has also had its share of unwanted attention, such as illegal logging before and after U.S. military activities. In the early 1960s, um, the area, the Aripo Savannah area, was subjected to quarrying activities both for sand and gravel, particularly the area close to the quarry side, the KP land area. And that went along for over 30 years where quarrying would, was done on a, system, on a regular basis to sustain the growing road demands in the country. Strong public pressure brought a stop to quarrying which had decimated the original palm and marsh forests in quarry areas. In Aripo Savannas, you had a big area that was damaged in the past by quarrying activities. So the group saw it fit to do some um, remedial replanting exercises. And so we decided, well, since 1998, every year annually, we have been going in into Aripo Savannas and replanting a species that can only be found within Aripo Savannas. There is evidence that some natural regeneration has also occurred since then. Today, the Aripo Savannas is faced with new challenges, the greatest of which is squatting, which itself has been linked to poaching and fires. To combat these bushfires, the EME has facilitated fire management training to the local communities. One of the greatest de devastation of um, the savannas itself and the savannas ecosystem is that of indiscriminate fires. And in indiscriminate fires, we're talking about fires which are mostly man-made fires, either created by people, agricultural squatters in the area, compounded by hunters, and somewhat in most recent time, the squatting, the squatting community tend to clear pockets of lands within the savannas and fire has been used as a tool to um, clear large areas of the savannas for 
um, those type of activities. Shortly after its 2007 designation as an ESA, the management of the Aripo Savannas was advised by a stakeholder management committee. The committee is comprised of state agencies, research bodies, NGOs, and CBOs from the surrounding communities. Sandhu began in 1998 to do some conservation work in Aripo Savannas. Well, the group has actually started with the idea to go in and help rehabilitate some of the areas because we had a about six people was in CCC, Southern Conservation Corps, and they used to go in and Naripa Savannas and do work. And based out of their uh, exposure to Aripa Savannas, they fell in love with the Aripa Savannas and decided that something had to be done in order to conserve the area. An integrated management plan was developed by Canary in 2009 after extensive public consultations. The main objectives of this plan are to protect the natural ecosystems and allow for their natural regeneration, provide opportunities for research related to natural history, and to provide environmental and natural science education. The management plan calls for protection of both the area and its watershed through regular patrols. Under the EMA's legal notice, it is illegal to hunt, trespass, cut vegetation or build any type of structure within the Aripo Savannah's strict nature reserve. According to the Environmental Management Act, one can be fined up to $100,000 and face imprisonment for up to two years if one commits an offense as outlined in the EM Act against an ESA or ESS. The EMA continues to fulfill its duty to educate the public about the value of the Aripo Savannah's and how it can be safeguarded for generations to come. Strategies include public lectures, interviews, media releases, signs, posters, and special publications and events. The future of this beautiful and unique treasure depends on respecting its fragile ecosystems. Today, entry to the savannas is tightly controlled by the Forestry Division. This, among other restrictions, are the best tools to ensure that after thousands of years, the Aripo Savannas does not disappear in the blink of an eye.